into your space, into your homes, to offer our praise and thanksgiving through worship. We invite you now to connect spirits, even from a distance, as we unite our hearts in worship to God. With all our weakness and strength, with our youth-filled spirit and aging bodies, we come to be your people, O oh God. Strong in faith and eager with questions, singing our praise and whispering our prayers, we come to be your people, O oh God. Filled with saintly determination, yet mindful of our human limitations, we come to be your people, O oh God. Made strong in your endless love for us, we know ourselves to be yours. And so, O God, in the spirit of worship, we come to be your people. May we truly become your people today in worship. Amen. Let us pray. God, grant us your presence as we lift up your name on high. We come, O oh God, in this place, in our different homes, wherever we find ourselves, recognizing you as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. We thank you, O oh God, for yet another day of worship. We pray that all that we seek to be and to do through this experience may be pleasing in your sight. We offer ourselves now to you, O oh God. We offer all of our offerings unto you. May what we be here today be a blessing to us, to our neighbors, to our friends. Bless this worship experience. Revive us, renew us, energize us to be your people. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. I welcome you, my brothers and sisters, from far and near as we come to our different means of connectivity to worship God together. To the members and friends of West Highsville, I thank you for joining us again on this Sunday, another Lord's Day, as we celebrate. And if you're a guest joining us for the first time, we welcome you and thank you for connecting with us this morning. Pray God's blessings on you. We pray that whatever your heart is seeking this morning, that God in his own time and in accordance with his own will will grant it unto you. I pray God's blessings on every home, on every family, on every individual, no matter where you are and who you are, that through this experience, you will indeed become a member of God's family. So again, welcome to all of us. And we pray God's blessings on our interactions today. By way of announcement, we will continue having our um, morning prayer time every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, even through this month of August. Please connect with us at 6.30 every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday mornings. You can find detail for uh, connection information on our website at whbchurch.org. Again, whbchurch.org. We will be suspending our midweek uh, evening service, that is our prayer service and Bible study, for the month of August. Uh, we will resume our Bible study uh, in the month of September. And I just thank all of you who participated in our series, Studying the Book of John. I thought it was a wonderful, wonderful series and I hope that uh, um, it impacted your lives in the positive way. So again, just be reminded, our morning prayers continue Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays. But for the month of August, we are suspending our midweek service. Again, let me remind you as part of our community announcement uh, that we encourage you to continue wearing your mask and do all you can to help curtail the spread of COVID-19. And we're going to be praying for those who are living with the pandemic, uh, even as we all seek uh, to do the best we can to protect ourselves, our families, and our neighbors. Again, let me remind you, uh, voters registration 
is open and has been for a while. So if you have not already registered to vote, we encourage you to please do so. And then when the appropriate time comes, we encourage you to vote. We continue to be in prayer with uh, uh, the Martin family, Sister Martin, and on Tuesday, August the 4th, uh, we will be uh, laying to rest her son, Michael, uh, on uh, August the 4th. And uh, that funeral will take place at the Stewart Funeral Home, 4001 Benny Road, Northeast Washington, D.C. We are only invited, if you are able, to the viewing that starts at 10 a.m. and include at 10.45 because of the restriction placed on uh, gathering and the enforcement of social gathering. The actual funeral, which begins at 11, will be limited to family and invited guests of family only. So again, the view is at 10 a.m. to 10.45 at 4001, uh, 4001 Benny Road Northeast, and it's going to be at the Stewart Funeral Home. So those of us who are able and want to come by and just wave to the family and, and just uh, sympathize with them with your presence, you can do so beginning at 10 a.m., 1045. The funeral will be closed to family members and those whom the family have invited only. This has been the first Sunday in the month. We want to take the time to recognize those persons who are celebrating birthdays and anniversaries. We want to pray God's blessings on you uh, for uh, having another year. And uh, we pray that as you grow older, that you will grow wiser. And for those who are celebrating anniversaries, we want to thank God for you, and we pray that God will continue to sustain your union. Again, to those having happy birthdays, we say happy birthday to each of you and happy anniversaries. May all of us rejoice with you in this moment. And we want to be in prayer also for those persons who are returning to school. Most of our young people will be returning to school and want to pray for the anxiety level, more importantly, the anxiety level of the parents, all of us who have uh, school-age children, we know what it means when we're sending them back to the classroom in this season of COVID-19. So we want to keep all of them in prayer. It's time to give, and again, I want to start that uh, call to giving by thanking you for your gifts. Again, we want to thank all of you who uh, making the sacrifice to support your church through your tithes and your offerings. I want to thank you so very much for all that you do to continue to sustain the church. And so as we come now to give, a just simple reminder, we give out of love for God, out of appreciation for what God has done for us, what God is doing, and what God will do. In a moment, we're going to invite Deacon Limus to come and pray for us to all give us our offertory prayer. But as you prepare, wherever you are, to give back to God, we pray that you will give out of the honest spirit of your heart. That you're not giving out of duty, out of commitment, but you're giving out of love. So as you gather your, your offering, as you fix your mind on what you giving God, we invite Deacon Limus to offer us our offertory prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, we come to you this morning, Lord, to give you thanks and praises. We also come this morning, Lord, to bring offering unto you. We just ask you, Lord, to bless those who gave. And bless those who had the mind to give but did not. We just thank you for the congregation. We know that some of our members are going through financial hardship. But yet and still, they give faithfully unto your kingdom. So we just thank you all for all that you have done. 
and all that you continue to do in our lives. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Deacon Lambus. And so receive your gifts in Jesus' name. And thank you for supporting the ministry here at West Hartsville Baptist Church. It's prayer time. In a moment, Reverend Faye Bostick is going to come and this in our community prayer. We want to encourage you wherever you are to pray along with us. There's so much, there's so much that we stand in need of. All during the week, a number of us, including some of you who are watching the service right now, we pray constantly, we pray diligently. We gather for three mornings and one evening every week to pray for the concerns of just not our nation, not only our, for our community, but for each other. And so we want to lift those people who have asked us to pray for them. We know we cannot name everyone, but this morning we want to, in a special way, remember Brother Henry Clement. We pray for Brother Clement this morning, his family, as they together battle illness. We pray that God will visit that home and that God will come them in the moment of medical hardship. We pray for Brother Clement's spirit, even as he seeks an intervention from God in his life. We pray for Brother Brian Taylor. We thank God for what God has been able to do with him throughout his, his years. But now he pays for a breakthrough, for a miracle. And we pray for both Brother Taylor and his mother Thelma. We pray that God will bless that family and that home in a special way. We also lift up Sister Martin. We mentioned a few moments ago that on Tuesday, she'll be laying her son Michael to rest. And so we pray for her, for her family, for the siblings, for all of the surviving relatives, that God will be with them. We thank God for this church and for all the members of this church. We thank God for allowing us to continue to do ministry even in these difficult times. So we pray for everyone in this church, every family member, that God will continue to strengthen us. We pray for the entire community of Hyattsville. We pray for the state of Maryland and this nation and our world. That God will continue to help us to live with and survive COVID-19. But we pray for civility in our politics. We pray that as we move closer to national elections, that God's spirit will be in the hearts and minds of those who are seeking to occupy positions of leadership. That, oh God, that we pray to you that they will seek the interests of the people that they desire to serve. That they will speak to issues and refrain from uh, humanity abuse. That they will speak language, oh God, that will unite this nation and not continue to divide us. We pray this morning, oh God, especially for those persons who have still not taken uh, COVID-19 seriously. We pray especially for our young people who think that because of their youth, they are invincible to this disease. We pray that all of us, O oh God, will come to realize that we are indeed our brothers and sisters' keepers. We should not abuse the freedom that you have given us. We pray, Father, that we'll be able to use it in ways that will respect the humanity of the next person. Help nation, O oh God, to, to learn to live through this season, recognizing that the survival of my neighbor could just well be in my hands. So as Reverend Master come now to lead us in our community prayer, we cast all of our cares, O oh God, on you 
because you have invited us to do that. And so, family, wherever you are, let's unite in our hearts as Reverend Bostock leads us in our community prayer. Let us pray together. Heavenly Father, merciful God, my Lord and my God, my strength and my redeemer. Lord, it is with thanksgiving, Father God, that you have blessed us to come here this morning, Lord God, to give you all the honor, praise, and glory, Lord God, and we thank you, Father. We thank you, Father, for our rising up this morning. We thank you, Lord God, for just blessing so many to be able to get up out of their beds this morning, to turn on TV, to listen in on the phone, Lord God. Lord, we thank you, Lord. You are worthy, Lord God, of all the honor, praise, and glory. Bless all of those, Lord God, that are looking to you, Lord God, because from you cometh all their help and strength. Lord God, we thank you, Father, for Jesus Christ, our Savior, who died on the old rugged cross for our sins, that we all might have a right to eternal life. We thank you this morning, Lord God, for eyes to see, ears to hear, hands to touch, feet to walk, Lord God, for so many of us, Lord God. And we just thank you for the opportunity, Lord God, that we can open up our mouths, Lord God, and open up praises to you, Father God, in the name of Jesus. You said in your word, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, and seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sins and I will heal the land. And Lord, we come to you right now interceding on behalf of so many that are going through. Lord God, so many are sick right now, Lord God, on their bed's affliction. Dear Heavenly Father, they are calling out to you and so we pray, Lord God, if it's your will that you will raise them up, that you will heal their bodies, Lord God, that you will work a miracle in their lives, dear Heavenly Father. Our pastor has called out names, Lord God, among our congregation. And Lord, we lift them up to you, Lord God. We lift up the uh, members, Lord God, that are not doing well, dear Heavenly Father. On our sick list, Lord God, we ask you to move in a mighty way in their lives, dear Heavenly Father. And let them know that you are God, that you can do all things, Lord God. That there's nothing too hard for you. And Father, we thank you right now for interceding, Lord God. For just blessing somebody right now, Lord God. For healing somebody right now, dear Lord God. For alleviating, alleviating the pain in somebody's body right now, dear Heavenly Father. Oh Lord, we thank you right now because we know there are God who can do all things, Lord God. Heavenly Father, just move in mighty way. Lord God, bless all over the land, dear Lord God. So many are experiencing this COVID-19, uh, Lord God, the virus in their bodies. So many are on ventilators right now, Lord God. Father God, we ask you to intervene right now. That you just move in their lives, Lord God, and raise them up, dear Heavenly Father. We pray blessings upon the caregivers, Lord God, that are there for them, the nurses, the doctors, the technicians, and all others, Lord God, who have been entrusted to their care. That you would just move in their lives and give them the know-how to do what they need to do, Lord God. Father God, protect them, dear Heavenly Father. Oh, Lord God, we pray in the name of Jesus. Bless our land, Lord God. So much is going on, dear Heavenly Father. So many out there protesting, dear Lord God, for social justice, dear Heavenly Father. Keep them in your care, dear Lord God. Be with them, dear Lord God, in the name of Jesus. And let them have the right man, mind to know what they are protesting for, Lord God. Father God, just bless them. Send, them, send us a leader, Lord God, among the protesters, dear Heavenly Father. We know that everyone cannot be a leader. Father God, but we ask you to move in a mighty way as you have done in the past, Lord God. 
Father God, let us be mindful of every, all of those, Lord God, that lost their lives, Lord God, for the sake of justice, Lord God. Oh, Father God, let us be mindful, dear Heavenly Father, oh Lord, that we need to get out there and register and vote in November, dear Lord God. We can make a difference, Lord God, oh Heavenly Father, just move in somebody's life to say, my vote will not matter. Lord, let them come to realize that we all get together, Lord God. Our votes will matter, dear Heavenly Father. Father God, just move and we thank you, Father God, for your blessings. We thank you for being God Almighty. We thank you, Lord God, how you moved in our lives, dear Heavenly Father. We can all testify to the goodness of what you have done, and we can just Share that with others and thank you, Lord God, because you are worthy. You've always made a way out of no way, dear Lord God. Oh, Heavenly Father, you said weeping may endure for a night, but we know that joy will come in the morning. Oh, Heavenly Father, and we know that you are God, that your will will be done, dear Lord God. And we trust you, Lord God. We lift up your holy name. Oh, Heavenly Father, we pray. We pray blessings upon this worship service, Lord God, that is led by our pastor. And we pray your blessings upon him, Pastor Dunn, as he comes up, Lord God, to share a word with us that it will resonate in our hearts and minds that we might be better men, women, and children because of it. Move in his life in a mighty way. Anoint him, dear Lord God, in a mighty way, dear Lord God. Keep him in your care, Lord God. Keep him high and lifted up in you, dear Heavenly Father. We thank you. Bless his family. Keep them safe, dear Lord God. Bless all of those anticipating in their worship service this morning, dear Lord God. Oh, Heavenly Father, our musicians, our, our soloists, Lord, Heavenly Father, our media team, and those that are in the congregation, just move in a mighty way. We thank you, Lord God. We lift up for your holy name because you are worthy. And Lord, just bless us, Father. We love you, Lord. We want to do the right thing, dear Heavenly Father. Just bless and keep us all in your care. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Leave 
Sister Dix for always coming and, and blessing us. Thank you for, uh, especially this morning, uh, reminding us of that promise that God has made never to leave us nor forsake us. And we thank God for that. If you have your Bibles, you can turn with me to the book of Malachi, Malachi uh, chapter 3, Malachi chapter 3. And just want to read just one line from uh, verse 6. Malachi chapter 3, you can go back and, and read actually the entire uh, prophecy, just four chapters, not too long. Uh, but for our purpose today, I'm just going to be using a portion of verse 6. So it's Malachi 3, verse 6a, verse 6a. And this is what it says. I, the Lord, do not change. I, the Lord, do not change. One of the greatest challenges to live in is having to deal with the inconsistencies of life. I think life would be better lived if we didn't have to go through the different stages of changes. No matter who you are, no matter how much money you have, no matter your level of education, your position of influence in the society, all of us go through changes. You, you, can, you can practice the best diet. You can take advantage of all of the cosmetic surgeries. Life presents us with changes. And the challenge we have is trying to adapt to these changes. A case in point, we're living with 
uh, COVID-19. And, and every time you, you listen to a new scientific discovery on this uh, virus, we are learning new things. Because the virus continues to evolve, and every time anything evolves, it creates changes. And so our approach to something that is constantly changing creates a level of difficulty and creates a level of confusion that in some instances leads to depression. Life presents us with all of these changes sometimes catastrophic changes that we cannot deal with relationship changes whether it's uh, parental or spouses uh, or professional we go through all of these changes and so nothing in life is constant i know we we, we make the joke and say there are only two things that that we have to be mindful of dying and paying taxes. And even in paying taxes, we experience changes. Because depending on who uh, occupies the White House, uh, our rate of uh, 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 exchange, the, the rate at which we, we, we pay taxes changes depending on who's uh, in the White House. So, so nothing in life is constant. But the good news this morning is that the God we serve never changes. And so for a brief moment, using uh, just that one statement and the sixth verse of the third chapter of the prophet uh, Malachi that says, I, the Lord, do not change. I like to talk about consistency of God. The consistency of God. The Bible opens, the Bible opens with a declaration that in the beginning, God. That there's no, that there's no uh, 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 prelude to that. It just opens with that one great declaration. In the beginning, God. And the rest of the Bible, all of the uh, 66 books that we have, uh, if you subscribe to the uh, Apocrypha, the additional 11 or so books, all of those books speak to that, all of those books speak to that declaration that in the beginning, God. So everything else that we read in the Bible, all of the prophetic books, all of the law books, all of the books of the gospel, all of the books put together, uh, help us to understand this God that the Bible declare or brought into existence in the very first verse of Genesis chapter 1. Now, in order for us to understand the consistency of God, we have looked to the, the person of God. When we speak of the person of God, we speak of triune nature of God, meaning God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. The Christian church believe in this uh, uh, one mystery of the Godhead, that we say that God manifests himself in three persons, God the Father, the Creator, God the Son, the Savior, God the Spirit, the Sustainer. All three persons working together as one unit to substantiate the fact that in the beginning God and so we speak of the the, the personhood of God we have to speak about the nature of God when we speak of the nature of God we have to accept the fact that that there's nothing that was before God and there will be nothing after God so much so that the Bible in Revelation declare that God is the Alpha and God is the Omega. Those are two uh, letters in the, in the Greek alphabet. The Alpha meaning the first and Omega meaning the last. That God is the Alpha before everything and God is the end after everything. So there was nothing before God and there will be nothing after God, we speak to the nature of God because God has been the same in the beginning when he spoke into existence, the created uh, formation, and God will be what this world ceases to be. 
And so the very nature of God is of such that God's nature does not change. And in order to appreciate the consistency of God, we have to realize that this God we serve was not created. No one spoke God into existence. It is God who spoke all of us and everything that created nature into existence. So we serve a God who is all by himself. Meaning that God is self-existent. God is self-existent, uh, which means that, that, that God is just God. I cannot explain how God became God, because to do that would be becoming God, and we cannot become God. All right? So all I can declare is what the Bible declared, that in the beginning, God. All right? so, so we appreciate a God who, who did not come by way of any explosive means, a God who did not come by way of any scientific means, a God who did not come into existence because of the Big Bang Theory, a God who did not come to existence because a committee decided to create a God. But God is God. And because God is God, because God never changes, it speaks to this consistent God. Now, now, before you get confused into uh, understanding the consistency of God, uh, this consistency is not making reference to the fact that, that, that just because God healed my neighbor, he's going to heal me. That's not the kind of consistency we are talking about. The consistency we're speaking of God is that God's nature, God's character, God's attributes does not change. How God decides to administer his will and his blessings to you is of God's own doing. All right. So there are three things I, I, I want to, uh, to lift up uh, in your hearing today as we speak about this uh, uh, unchangeable God, this, this consistent God. The first thing is that God's sovereignty is consistent. God's sovereignty. And that word sovereignty simply means this. That God doesn't need your help to do anything. In, in, in plain, simple language. Now, now the, 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 the more theological understanding of God's sovereignty is, is that God does whatever, whenever, wherever, and with whomever God chooses. In other words, God's actions, write this down if you want to, God's actions are not influenced by any outside source. You've heard the expression, he or she who pays the piper calls the tune. In other words, uh, a march to the drumbeat of the person who's feeding me. If, if you understand that. And, and, and that's why, that's why uh, some of our politicians, I'm not going to say all, but some of our politicians set policies based on how much money they get from a lobbying firm downtown D.C. That, that the, the, the actions, that the policies that they put in place, that, that the bill that they bring on the house floor for passage is based on someone else who lying in their pockets. Uh, if you don't believe me, come to understand this. Most of the bills that come on the floor for passage are not even written by lawmakers. They are written by, by lobbyists who have something to gain from the passage of those bills. And that's why our black and brown skinned people don't benefit the most from some of these bills because they are not written in our interests. They're not written in our interests. But when we speak of the sovereignty, so I declare here on this Lord's Day that, that Capitol Hill is not sovereign because they don't speak in a vacuum, they speak based on how much money lines the pocket to influence whatever the outcome 
of those bills are. But when we speak of the sovereignty of God, uh, we, we, we uh, and declare that God's actions are never, has never been, and will never be influenced by outside sources. That God's sovereignty is consistent with God's nature, which declare that God never changes. It says here in Malachi, as he spoke to the, the people of Israel, that I, your Lord and God, do not change. Now, now this prophetic word comes within the context you know I like to put everything in context so it helps you understand it better. Uh, this, little, this little one little short sentence in the third verse of, uh, in the sixth verse of the third chapter of Malachi is within the context of Malachi's prophetic word to Israel. For Israel, in this context, had broken all the covenant relationship. The covenant that God established with Abraham that brought them into existence, they are at a point in the walk with God where they had broken all of the promises. Even the priests were corrupt. And God stepped into this corruption and says to them, remember, I don't change. In other words, what I did to your forefathers in Babylon, I can do to you again. I will not change my value just because you are my child. Remember, Israel, I formed you. I brought you into this world. And I will take you back into exile if you're not careful. I do not change. It's within this context. And Malachi declared. Thus said the Lord. So we speak the consistency of God. Understand that God's sovereignty is of such that it's not influenced by anyone else. Psalm 135, 6 says, The Lord does whatever pleases him in heaven and on earth and in the seas in all of his death. In other words, no matter where humanity is, God's will will prevail so not only is god's sovereignty consistent but god's holiness is also consistent that god is sovereign but god is also holy when we think of the holiness of god this word holy always kind of petrified most of us because we think holiness is calling us to perfection that to say I'm holy means I am without blemish, I am without fault, I am without sin. And you and I both know that that is not the case. The fact that God invites us to be holy means that this word holy takes on a whole different experience. And it's not calling us to perfection, even though we strive for perfection. This word is simply means separated. Simply means separated so we talk about the church being holy we talk about uh uh they will go to the greek word uh ekasia, which which we get our english word church which means separated i think i've I, i've talked to you, to you about this before it's almost it's like a circle term where you go to surgery and whatever uh is is, is causing you uh discomfort that that thing, it could be that 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 mass or, or, or that cell, whatever, is actually removed, taken away from you. You are separated from that which causing you discomfort. So when you think about the church, when you think about holy, think about that. Think about being removed from that element that will cause you some spiritual discomfort. When we speak of the holiness of God, we're speaking about the fact that God is totally removed from anything that defiles God being God. So even though God, God died for our sins, God does not have a character that can sin. And so God has always been separated, it's almost as a paradox. How can God be separated and walk with us at the same time? That's what made God God. Because God can tabernacle with us. God can uh, uh, pitch his tent in our community. God can build his apartment within our community. At the same time, we'll be removed from all of those things that the process so easily 
be us. And that's what makes God, God. And that speaks to the consistency of God. So not only is God sovereign, not only is God holy, but God is also merciful. Let's spend some time talking about this word mercy because we use it all of the time. God have mercy. Oh, God have mercy on me. We use this word all the time. The fact of the matter is, uh, Israel, Israel always found herself seeking the mercy of God, even though Israel knew from the very beginning what God had required of them. But because Israel knew that God was merciful God, Israel always messed up, came back, fell on bend the knees, and said, Lord, have mercy. Our world today, our world, our world, uh, for the most part, we have a very low tolerance for deviant behavior. We have very low tolerance for, de for deviant behavior. So much so that, that the people who, who break the law, uh, uh, depending on who they are to us, uh, we want you know, the law to be thrown at them with the full weight and full force. So much that we want them to be, what, taken out of society. Because we have no tolerance for the actions of that individual or group of individuals, especially if those actions affected my well-being. Even if those actions affected well-being. Uh, the story is told of this mother uh, whose son had done something uh, that warranted death within Napoleon's army. And at the sentencing of, of, of this young man, his mother appeared before uh, Napoleon and, and said to Napoleon, uh, please have mercy on my son. And Napoleon said, this is not the time for mercy, this is the time for justice because your son does not deserve mercy. And she said, all due respect, sir. If my son deserve it, it wouldn't be mercy. If my son deserve it, it wouldn't be mercy. For no one deserves God's mercy. I said, mercy, mercy, mercy comes to us. Uh, and not because of how good we have been. Mercy comes our way because of God's consistent love for his creation. None of us deserve God's mercy. But God's come in our lives at that point in time when we have messed up. And all we need and all we can do is to declare unto God, God, here I am. Have mercy on me. In other words, God, please give me some of that which I don't deserve. Because if God was to dispense justice on us, none of us would be here. Because we all stand in need of God's mercy. And God's mercy is spent in ways that is consistent with his nature. Then God says, I know the plans I have for you. I don't want to harm you. I, I, want to, I want to be good to you. I want to give you a bright and a kind future. I want to bless you in, 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 in who you are. And so I come into your space not to condemn you. Even though our very actions warrant the justice of God. So when we speak of the consistent nature of God when we speak of the consistency of God we're speaking of a God who does not change but he deals with us based on who God is we find the book of Hebrews Hebrews chapter 13 verse 8 speaking about this consistency of God but now in the person of Christ he says what the book of Hebrews say what that Jesus is the same yesterday today 
and forever. Hebrews is speaking to exact same thing that the prophet Malachi spoke about in Malachi 6 chapter uh, 3 verse 6 when he says what? I the Lord your God does not change. Hebrew says the exact same thing of Jesus, that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Why could Hebrew say that about Christ? Because we talk about the, the blessed trinity of the Godhead. If God does not change, then Jesus cannot change. If Jesus cannot change, then the Spirit of God cannot change. Why? Because God, Jesus, and the Spirit equals to one Godhead. And they are consistent with each other. So the consistency of God does not only apply to us, but it applies to the Godhead itself. And so the church separates that we serve a God who doesn't change. A God who, who stays consistent with all of human creation. And it doesn't matter what comes to influence our community, our environment, our family. God is still the same. God's love for us is still the same. Ah, that if God loved you yesterday, that he'll love you today and he will love you tomorrow. If God had mercy on you yesterday, he will have mercy on you today and will have mercy on you tomorrow. If God brought you out of, the, out of hell yesterday, he will sustain you today and tomorrow because the Bible declares that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That God never changes because his nature is consistent with who he is and so we celebrate today knowing that the church of jesus christ we serve a god who never changes yes uh, the clouds will go dark rain will fall hurricane will rumble tornado will destroy but god stays on forever uh, the Bible declare that all things will pass away, but God stays forever. This world will pass away, but God stays forever. Heaven and hell will pass away, but God stays forever. God is consistent with his nature. And so we declare in the beginning, God, today, God forever God because God is indeed the Alpha and the Omega so we celebrate God today for all that God continues to do with and for us I pray God's blessings that this word will encourage your hearts will lift up your spirits to know that whatever you're going through that the God of Jesus Christ, the God who walked water, the God who fed the 5,000, the God who raised the dead, is the same God who walks with you. It's the same God who talks with you. It's the same God who embraces you no matter who you are. It's the same God who will have mercy upon your soul. Let us pray. We thank you, God, for your word. We thank you, God, for reminding us of who you are. We thank you, God, for letting us know that nothing, nothing will be able to separate us from your love. Nothing will be able to remove us from your mercy because of your sovereign nature. So thank you, God, for loving us. Thank you for having mercy on us. Thank you for keeping us. And I pray right now, O oh God, that everyone who have listened to this word, everyone who heard this word, O oh God, will declare that you are indeed an unchangeable God. It's in your name, pray. Amen. Today being first Sunday is our tradition here at Wiseville to celebrate the Lord's Supper. 
And so I invite you now to uh, reach for your elements, your, your bread and, and uh, your juice, that we'll come to celebrate this symbolic act of the church. Symbolic, yes, but with so much meaning. And so I pray that this experience will yet again remind us of the love that Christ has for his church. Love so divine that calls him to give his life for his church. So as you prepare yourselves, I invite us now to come together to celebrate this wonderful, wonderful feast of the church that we called the Lord's, the Lord's Supper. The Bible declared that on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he gathered his disciples with him in the upper room. There he took bread. And he said these words, that this bread represents my body. We shall be broken for you. After giving thanks for this bread, he broke the bread gave it to his disciples and said, take each of you, eat of this bread. For this bread represents my body that shall be broken for you. He said, eat it and do it often. And every time you do it, remember my death and remember my suffering. In like manner, he took the cup. And after lesson it, he gave it again to his disciples. He said, take each of you, drink of it, for this is my blood that shall be shared for the remission of sin. This is my blood that will be shared for the removal of sin. Mm -hmm. My friends, while both this bread and this wine is symbolic, the story behind it is not symbolic. The story is indeed real. For God, through Jesus Christ, did get broken on Calvary's cross. He was indeed nailed to the cross. He suffered. He bled. He died. His blood was spilled. Not because he did anything wrong. But because he said, greater love has no man than for a man to lay down his life for his friend. And Christ, through God, demonstrated his love toward us. That while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So why this bread and this wine might be symbolic, the story behind it is real. And so we come as a family of faith, recognizing that Christ's body was indeed broken, that Christ's blood indeed was spilled. And so we come, I'm going to invite Reverend Bostick to come and pray over these elements, the bread and the wine. And we pray that as we go through this feast, that we will be mindful of the spiritual nature that goes along with it. Let us pray wherever you are. Heavenly Father, we pray blessings over the meal that we are about to receive, dear Lord God. The wine that represents the shed blood of Jesus, who shed his blood for us on Calvary's cross. And the bread that symbolizes Jesus' broken body. Mm -hmm. Father God, we pray blessings and we come thanking you, Father God, for all that Jesus did for us on that old rugged cross. And we, Lord God, with thanksgiving mm -hmm. in remembrance of the precious blood and the broken body that was shed for those that will call on his name. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The broken body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Let us commune together. The cup that represents the spilled blood of Christ shared for us so that all of us will have the right to eternal life. Let us bring together. Eternal God, may we forever remember how you walk the dusty streets of Palestine, how you took your cross and went up Calvary's hill, how you suffered, bled, and died, all because of me, all because of us. Well, God, may we rejoice in the fact that we do have an empty tomb that declared that on the third day you rose again as Lord and Savior of all of humanity. And, oh God, fix our hearts and minds toward the day when the trump of the Lord shall sound. And, oh God, those who have gone before us shall be raised incorruptible. And those of us who are yet alive will be caught up with you to take our final journey to feast once again around the table of our Lord in heaven. Grant us, O oh God, your sweet benedictions as we go into the highway to serve humanity. Amen. And after supper was ended, the Bible says that Jesus went into the Mount of Olives. May we go in the highways, highways, wherever we find ourselves. May our God not be that of Christ. But may God find us in places of service. Go in peace, my brothers and my sisters. May God bless you today and in the days to come. Amen.